As Destiny prepares to enter what many feel are the final stages with the aptly named expansion, The Final Shape, we have brand new leaks and rumors surfacing about Destiny 3, and one of the sources of this information just got a bunch of things right about The Final Shape DLC and the reveal. Now, the history of Destiny as a franchise certainly has had its ups and downs. Many thought that a Destiny 3 would never happen, especially when Bungie opted to continue with Destiny 2, and then they broke up with Activision, but it seems that they may have bought themselves enough time to build a proper future game, while also seemingly putting Destiny 2 into its golden age so that it can sort of coast and go into cruise control. This is sort of similar to how they did the Age of Triumph in Destiny 1. You sort of end with the best era of the game and your greatest hits. Now, this video is going to redirect to a live discussion at the end of it. It'll also be linked below. So I might be live right now. If you want to discuss this and see what I have to say, make sure you hit subscribe on the channel as well so you're here for the uploads and the live shows so very quickly i want to walk through the backstory here and what led to this moment and then i want to look at the leaks and what they're claiming and then give you sort of my position on this along with some predictions about what i think is going to happen with destiny 2 as well as the future of the franchise but first just a little backstory under the original agreement with activision destiny 3 would have already launched but bungie made i think the right decision this has been my opinion and i think most people agree they made the decision to stick with destiny 2 rather than start over just because of how rough it was when they did that with destiny 2 it took the game a while to get into a very good place as well as just with the cadence of content coming out now when they did this this came coupled with the decision to break up from activision and self-published destiny and at the time it seemed like a very bold move and we have since learned that it indeed was a very bold move there were apparently times where the game was struggling the future was very uncertain and if you couple this with the other financial issues that they were apparently facing it led to their very unique deal with sony just two years ago in 2022 sony acquired Bungie. Bungie for 3.6 billion and both Bungie and Sony stressed that Bungie would remain independent in this deal. In the official blog on Bungie.net, it states, quote, We remain in charge of our destiny. We will continue to independently publish and creatively develop our games. Now, they even published a frequently asked questions site and page to address the question about whether current projects or whether upcoming projects would become PlayStation exclusives. Question. Bungie has future games in development. Will they now become PlayStation exclusives? Answer. No. We want the worlds we are creating to extend to anywhere people play games. We will continue to be self-published, creatively independent, and we will continue to drive one unified Bungie community. Now, some fear that this may change with the layoffs and the concern about the waning interest in Destiny and the Final Shape. Folks at the company indicated that more layoffs will likely happen if the final shape is not successful enough. And some rumors started surfacing that Sony may be able to even take over and step in if the things get bad enough or if the sales aren't strong enough. Personally, I think Bungie needs to have the leadership in the upper levels just completely removed and replaced so they can retain all of the talent within the studio. I would hope that they could do that instead of laying off more people. And the reception to the Final Shape news in the trailer seems like things are getting back on track. And that's when the leaks about Destiny 3 come into play. So back in February, a leaker rightly predicted that the Prismatic subclass was coming to Destiny, which allows you to combine both dark and light powers. Now, back when I still played and covered Destiny, I always thought we were headed to something like this once we started picking up orbs of power instead of orbs of light. I predicted we we would no longer be guardians of light, that, that we would become guardians of power. And that still might happen based on some of the things we're hearing about Destiny 3, but according to Eurogamer, the leaker getting the subclass info correct caused people to go look at what else he had said, and this is what he said. Destiny 3 is, or was, I don't know, in development under codename Payback, the leaker said of Bungie's plans for a full Destiny 2 sequel, caveating that what they knew had come from former Bungie employees and that plans were subject to change. Now, you'll notice a theme here that the leaker isn't sure if this stuff is still currently happening or if it was happening. The layoffs and the concern over the final shape may have changed plans. But according to the leaker, one of the big plan changes for Destiny 3 is something similar to the Prismatic 
thematic subclasses. Here's a quote. One of the big changes for Destiny 3 is, was, again, I don't know, for classes to no longer exist and allow any character to spec into any ability. The leaker continued, Since lore-wise, there is no reason you couldn't, Hunters explicitly learned Blink from Warlocks, and Blink isn't tied to a single element, hence the logic there. And recently, Luke Smith spoke and said that they had plans after the final shape. And he said, we're going to tell you what's coming next for Destiny 2 and beyond. We will see you soon. Now, this is probably in relation to two things. First, we know that Destiny 2 will be shifting into a different content approach with the final shape. They're calling them episodes. Now, Game Rant had the following to say about it. Destiny 2's seasonal model has become increasingly stale over the last few years, but developer Bungie plans to remedy that with a new episodic format coming to the game with the launch of the final shape. So far, Bungie has revealed that each 18-week episode will provide, quote, less predictable content and give Destiny 2 players a chance to earn unique rewards. Many have speculated that this is essentially going to be coast mode for Destiny 2, which if the rumors about Destiny 3 are true, and I believe that they are, it would make sense. You would be scaling down your support and your content substance for Destiny 2 while building the next game. And according to Eurogamer, the leaker had more to say about this. As for Destiny 3, the leaker has continued today by affirming the game was planned as a fully-fledged new game in the franchise, rather than an expansion of Destiny 2 or a revamp of the existing game. As for its codename Payback, the leaker noted that this title was not a reference to any story events. Essentially, he said it was like them getting payback and building the game that they wanted to build. Keep in mind, the same leaker also indicated that Destiny 3 had been in development for about two years, meaning it roughly started in 2022. Now, this was made, I think, many people speculated about this that the potential then launch window would be 2027 Astacross also pointed out in a recent video that he put together that during one of the streams when asked about whether or not episode 3 like what happens after it they didn't really seem to want to answer it almost seemed like uh yeah we we can't really talk about that so episode 3 would be the ending uh, of sort of what they're outlining right now for the cadence it would end in february of 2025 now each episode is comprised of three six week acts so you got three little six week acts that's where you get your 18 weeks each act has new quests new story new activities and gear so if episodes are more sort of like coasting style content which I believe that they are. It's essentially like, yeah, we're not doing big DLCs. We're not doing big expansions. We're going to do episodes. Now, maybe those plans have changed, but it does seem to indicate that's what they're doing. And if the first round of episodes sort of ends in the beginning of 2025, you might see a more noticeable shift internally because, again, they're going to need to if they're trying to build the next game. Now, all of this could be detonated or severely changed if the final shape doesn't do well enough. So let me give you my position on this. First, I have heard that the next game would be about like some kind of a hybrid engine or something where they sort of ripped out the best parts of the Tiger engine, which I think would be necessary. The Tiger engine is needed for the Destiny feel, but I also think you really can see the continued limitations in the age of the engine itself. As much as they have tried, their ability to make content and changes quicker still just doesn't seem quick enough. It still feels as if all they've tried and all they've done They are still dealing with an engine that is a little bit dated at this point. I know they say that it's not, but it's pretty clear when you look at how quickly they're able to make content and deliver it. They are still dealing with some of those old issues that we heard about in the past, how it's just a tough engine to build in and make changes in. It is a little bit more slow in that regard. So I've always maintained that a Destiny sequel or a Destiny in the future, like if they really wanted to build some big expansive game, they would need a new engine of sorts, which was always met with concern about, well, then it's not going to feel like Destiny. Well, if they figured out a way to maintain using the Tiger engine without all the baggage, well, then the new game could truly be a huge step up for Destiny 2. I also think that whatever engine changes they make or tech advancements that they figure out, they would need to maintain the balance of the MMO and the action. Giant, sprawling open worlds sound great, but that could honestly work against the tight, bombastic action of Destiny. The tech limitations of the current game leads their public spaces to basically always be this sort of daisy chain of instances, so you're always going from one instance to another. It's not a completely giant open 
open world. Now, hopefully, if they're able to sort of shed those shackles in the next game, it wouldn't be to the detriment of how the game feels and plays. When I think of the large open worlds in those games that I play, I'm not sure that that would be the best context for a game like Destiny. One of the reasons that the Power Fantasy in Destiny always worked is because the gunplay feels tight and the enemies feel close. It creates this perfect cocktail of action and gunplay and you can kind of make a play and do something exciting moment to moment on a very regular basis. Dropping a guardian on a planet the size of like, let's say Elden Ring, that big huge map. Let's just say that's the planet. You land and you can go to all those places. Bungie would have to get really creative to create the Destiny feel in spaces that large. Overall, I think Destiny has a very strong appeal. I think they have brand recognition, but franchise fatigue is a real thing. So a new game would have to, at some level, just be revolutionary. It would need to be tectonic. It would need to feel like the game everybody has been sort of waiting for. It's always Destiny's days. The best days are ahead of us. Well, that has always felt a little bit like a carrot in front of a treadmill that we've never really gotten to so let me make some of my predictions here even at a distance i think it's easy to predict that destiny 2 is preparing for a shift into coast mode sort of cruise control less people working on it more of a live team support after all of the announcement recently and the changes to sort of like letting guardians feel even more powerful somebody asked in my discord they're like well why wouldn't they have just done this before why have they waited all this time and my response was very simple well that's not sustainable you cannot ask for the finale of a fireworks show to be the entire show right you can't do that you save everything and you condense it all down for the finale and that what's that's what makes it so impactful you can't blow the lid off the power fantasy because then you end up in situations with power creep well the guardians are so strong now we got to make the enemies stronger now you got to make the guardian stronger and you're just back and forth on the power creep seesaw so you might blow the lid off the power creep and the power fantasy if you're not really worried about that anymore And the only time you stop worrying about that is when EOL is on the horizon, end of life. If you know that the big DLCs and the major content points that aren't out there in the future anymore, well, you don't have to be careful with the power and the player. I also think more layoffs are likely. The initial reception of the final shape is strong, but I said this the other day. The Destiny community is always at its peak level of happiness right after a trailer. It's never during content. It's never during the seasons. The apex of excitement is always right after a trailer. If they manage to turn things around with the public and the lack of interest, then hopefully it will help keep the layoffs at bay and then that will serve the next game. You're not going to have talent loss or bandwidth loss because you're letting people go. But the apathy, the sort of shrug-shouldered attitude that many players have, that's really hard to change once people get to that point. Bungie, I will say, they are the masters, though, of filling in vacancies or fixing problems that they have created. So there certainly is a chance they pull it off one last time. I also think that no matter what happens with layoffs or the final shape, they will continue to build Destiny 3. Marathon simply isn't big enough as a game, I think, to gobble up all of the development staff of the company and you know, keep the lights on as they're sort of shifting down in gear in Destiny 2 and probably making less money from Destiny 2. I don't think Marathon would be able to sort of supplant what they've been doing all these years with Destiny as a franchise. I also don't have a lot of confidence in Marathon given the recent discovery that they changed leadership on the project, didn't announce it, and when it was going to become known, they suddenly announced it and they actually shifted to heroes in the game versus custom characters and that's not being received very well. So there you have it. Destiny 3 is likely in production coming at some point in the future. Destiny 2 appears to be setting the stage for cruise control after the final shape, but those are just my thoughts. Now it's time to hear your thoughts. And you can do that in the comment below or you can come to the live discussion right over there.